Hi, my name is Mia Costello, and for this assignment I am going to be talking about some learnings about the importance of differentiation in our classroom. So to start, why differentiation? Well, this is a secret that teachers, strong teachers, have known for decades, and that is to really reach all the kids in our class, we have to be able to scaffold and change our lessons to meet the needs of the kids in our room. In our classrooms every day, we have up to 30 plus learners who have different life situations, different life experiences, different learning styles and preferences, and different strengths and challenges. In order for each of our students to grow, therefore, they have to be challenged in their zone of proximal development, which means the difference between their current level and the potential where they can get to with supports, assistance, and frequent practice. So instead of using our one-size-fits-all model, it's really important that teachers feel confident and competent in differentiating their lessons and learning activities. That's the biggest key for success in our classrooms. So a definition, according to Catlin Tucker, differentiation is the process of modifying and adapting instruction, materials, content, individual student projects, and products and assessment to meet the learning needs of individual students. It involves assessing student knowledge in a given content area, but then using a variety of strategies to create a curriculum that's effectively individualized. Um, this means essentially that you can um, change the complexity of certain assignments, you can tailor the delivery, you can provide tiered instruction, um, and a lot of opportunities for ways to demonstrate student learning. The bottom line, differentiating instruction does not mean that a teacher is making 30 different versions of the same lesson to deliver. That's insane. But rather, the importance of it comes with teacher integrating student choice, opportunity for learners to receive and process information in a variety of ways, and also demonstrate their learning um, in multiple ways. Um, so bottom line differentiation can occur in the content process and product. So why does it work? Let's talk about some research. Um, according to Carol Tomlinson's book, How to Differentiate Instruction in Academically Diverse Classrooms, there are seven main reasons why differentiation works. Number one, it is proactive. Teachers are really taking the time before their lesson delivery to take a step back and think about the way that the lesson can and should be tailored to provide student opportunity and choice. Two, differentiate instruction is more qualitative than quantitative. The focus is on how students um, are able to demonstrate their learning, not a one-size-fits-all model. Number three, it is rooted in assessment, especially when using diagnostic assessment and summative assessment and focusing on the areas of growth. That's a really key um, foundation with differentiation. differentiation. Um, four, differentiation instruction is taking multiple approaches to content, process, and product. That's really key. Five, it's student-centered. This is so important for our constructivist classrooms. It is not about the teacher and the information that we can share, but rather us being guides to support our learners um, in taking in their knowledge and demonstrating their knowledge in a variety of really different ways. Six, differentiated instruction is a blend of whole class, group, and individual instruction. And Tomlinson's last key piece is that it's organic and dynamic. So, we know the why behind differentiated instruction, but now let's talk a little bit about how to integrate it into our classroom settings. Um, this is what I really like because when you talk to, to a lot of teachers, right now I'm coaching um, a set of five teachers, and we talk about differentiation, and especially for new teachers or teachers who have kind of been in the game um, for a while, it still feels really intimidating. Um, automatically, teachers are telling me, oh, this is going to increase my workload. I just don't think I can do it. I really want to, but I just don't know how I can. It's actually pretty easy once you start implementing some key systems that you can use in nearly every lesson. 
Um, so some great ways, learning menus and tic-tac-toe grids. This was my favorite way to offer differentiation in terms of student product in my lesson with my eighth grade students. Um, a, a teacher that I work with says, well, yeah, I'll offer an easy um, assignment and then a harder assignment. The easy assignment can be for my lower kids. And I just say, no, it's not about easier or harder. It's about providing opportunity for students and their multiple intelligences to demonstrate their learning in a variety of ways. It's not which one's better or worse or easier or harder. So I really liked offering tic-tac-toe grids. Um, which offered students a lot of different choices of their learning activities. Another great idea that I had from my mentor was offering a learning menu where for different points of the lesson there was an appetizer, an entree, and dessert. And under those buckets, um, students had a choice of how they could, um, their, their choice for the lesson, whether it was writing, art, research, um, partner discussion. There was a lot of different opportunities in there and the kids really liked it. I realized that, that even offering two um, choices on an assignment really greatly um, upped students' buy-in and feels of feeling of success. Um, Reader's Theater we know is another great way. This also hits fluency. Um, it's a great way for students to interact with the material and be able to kind of take center stage. Um, journaling is another awesome way we know because when students are journaling, especially if they're responding to a class text or an independent reading text, there are a lot of different prompts that we can provide or even offer like kind of a free choice for students to deeply engage and interact with the material that they're reading, which is key. Um, so we offer student choice and projects, whether it's individual research projects or group research projects. Literature study was my favorite. Um, you know, having a thematic unit and then offering students a set of choices on books that they could read that are also at varying levels um, that are connected to that thematic unit. And and then last, um, student choice and self-access materials and activities. I call this the fast finish wall. This is also another great place to use a tic-tac-toe grid, um, especially working with middle school students and high school students in the past. It was always really key for me to plan some extra activities for our students who are our fast finishers. Um, and this can be anything from independent reading or research to online grammar um, opportunities for really enriching activities, not like time wasters. Um, the last foundational piece I want to talk about is the importance of us as educators providing opportunities for students to know their own learning styles and multiple intelligences. So we know for learning styles, some of the primary ones are tactile learning, auditory, kinesthetic, um, and visual learning. But Howard Gardner also brings to the point of the need for us, for students to be able to identify their multiple intelligences that they bring in the classroom, whether it's their visual spatial intelligence, verbal linguistic intelligence, logical intelligence, kinesthetic intelligence, musical intelligence, interpersonal, intra personal, naturalistic, or existential. When I was going through this in the lesson, I always just thought, oh yeah, I'm a, I have a lot of great verbal intelligence, but I was going through the menu and I was finding new types of intelligence that I had not even been exposed to. Um, and that felt really empowering for me as an educator to see, oh yeah, I have interpersonal intelligence and intrapersonal intelligence. And I think that was an important experience for me to have. Um, in order to share that with our students. Um, in my experience working, I have always worked in urban classrooms, and particularly my, most of my experience has been in middle school and high school classrooms in Oakland. Now I'm going to be working with um, adult learners um, in a literacy program. So a lot of my students have had very negative um, self-identities as learners. This There's a lot of school trauma, and by the time 
a lot of students reach my class when they're 13, 14, their identity as to who they are as a learner is often set in this fixed mindset, and a lot of times it's not a positive self-identity. So I think in the beginning of every year when you get a new group of students, a really key um, activity that's it's bigger than just your classroom. It's something that kids can carry with them for their whole lives. It's to offer them um, kind of assessments, not assessments, but there was a great activity I, call, I used to use called How Many Ways Are You Smart? And it asked kids a set of, I think, 30 questions, and each of those different questions were based on a skill, and each of those skills was connected to a multiple intelligence and, and multiple, one of the multiple intelligences. And then at the end, students would kind of tally up and see the areas of intelligence where they were really strong in. And this, students told me year after year, was really, really empowering for them, um, especially for students who have traditionally been struggling learners. I think it's important for us to have information about how our students learn best. But more importantly, it's so key and crucial for us to provide students opportunities to explore their own learning styles and their own type of intelligence, both because of the way that it can alter um, their self-identity as a student, but also just for their long-term success in high school and beyond. Um, and having an understanding of this is really rooted in differentiation. We have to know our community. We have to know our students so we can tailor lessons to really help them reach their greatest potential. Um, in closing, George Evans has a quote from his book, Fulfilling the Promise of a Differentiated Classroom, that I love. And it's, the quote says, Every student can learn, just not in the same day or in the same way. All of our kids are not empty vessels waiting for us to be, waiting for, to be filled with knowledge, as we know. But it is our job to know our community and to know our kids and to be able to design our classrooms and our activities and our lessons to fit the needs of the communities we serve. You know, our teaching is rooted in social justice, and a big part of this is serving our community, and a big part of that is knowing our students. So those are some findings from my research on differentiation. <laughs>